A lot of PHP developers learn how to use Composer as part of the process of learning how to use a framework like Laravel. So in this guide, I want to talk about how we can use Composer outside of a framework context. How can we use it in just a plain old PHP project? To demonstrate this, I've set up a very simple project. I've just got a directory with a index.php file, got a little bit of content in that file, and I've set up my local web server so I'm able to load this in the browser. Now to integrate Composer into this project, all I have to do is in the root of the project, I'm gonna create a new composer.json file. For the contents of this file, I'm gonna go over to the notes that accompany this video and grab some starting configs. And to begin with, the only thing I have to customize is the name. So for vendor name, a common convention people will use is just your GitHub username. So I'll follow that convention. And then we can call the project whatever we want. I'm gonna call mine demo. Um, the only thing to be aware of when coming up with the vendor name and the project name is that uh, it should be all lowercase and it should include only letters and dashes, no special characters. With those configs in place, I'm gonna switch over to command line. I'm currently in the directory where I'm building this project and I'm gonna invoke the command composer update. And with that, our setup is complete. Uh, and the results of running that command, if we go back to our project, we should now see a vendor directory. This is where all of our outside dependencies are gonna go as well as our composer auto-loading configs are gonna go. It also generated a composer.log file, which once we start pulling in outside dependencies, uh, it's gonna record the specific version number of the dependencies that we're getting within that log file. And speaking of outside dependencies, let's see an example of that. So coming back to the notes that accompany this video, under requiring packages, I want to pull in this package called random quotes generator PHP, just as an example. Uh, we're going to pull this in using the composer require command, just like we would if we were in a framework based project, we're going to use composer like we normally would. So let's copy that back in command line, we're going to run that uh, composer require. And then the end result, if we go back to our code base, you could see that our composer.json file uh, automatically updates with that package under the require section. And so we should now be able to use this in our code base. Uh, to demonstrate that, let's go over to the index.php file. Let's set this up with some PHP code. Uh, and the first thing we need to do before trying to use any of our packages is we need to make sure that this file has access to our composer auto loading config. The way we'll do that is with a require statement and we're gonna reference within our vendor directory as an autoload.php file that Composer generated. All right, so just to see that, here's vendor, and then there's autoload.php. That's all we need to make this file Composer powered, so to speak. Uh, and this is not something you would see if you were working in a framework like Laravel because all of the Composer autoloading stuff is set up for you. It's not something you would ever see in say like a controller file or your routes file or anything like that. It's all pre-baked into the framework. But here in our DIY version, we do need to make sure we include that. All right, so now we can put this to use and uh, going back to the notes that accompany this video, I have some sample code that's gonna use that random quotes package. Uh, the first thing we have to do is add a use statement at the top of the file to make the random quotes class uh, accessible within the file. And then here's the code that's just gonna use it. So let's pull this into our example and test it out. All right, perfect, there's our random quote. And if I refresh it, I see a different one each time. Now, just to rewind on that code to make sure we're clear on what's going on, the whole idea with Composer auto-loading is we have access to all of these classes within our vendor directory without having to explicitly require each class. All right, so this random quotes class, we don't need a require statement that's pointing to the source file for that class. The auto-loading system has that mapped out so that when we go to use the class, it's able to locate it and import it for us. Um, now we still do need a use statement up top and that's just because of the namespacing system that Composer uses. This just ensures that when we go to use this class, it is gonna actually locate the correct class. And this is important if we uh, say had multiple classes with the same name, the namespacing is gonna allow us to indicate the specifics of which classes we're aiming for. So now that we know how to work with outside dependencies and classes, let's talk about classes that we might be creating within our project. How do we access them? Well, for this, let's go back to composer.json and I want to highlight this autoload config. Uh, there's a setting here for PSR4, which is just a convention we use in the PHP world that maps namespaces to directories. Uh, and the way I set this up in this example is I have a namespace called app that's going to map to a directory called source. This means that any classes we place within a source directory in our project will be accessible via this app namespace. Now the namespace of app and the directory name of source, that's completely arbitrary. You can customize this as you see fit. You might wanna name this after your company or the name of the project itself. 
uh, and the source directory. You could also change that, although I will mention it is a common convention to put your classes in a source directory. Uh, I'm going to leave it as the defaults and just show how we use this. So the first thing I'm going to do is create that source directory. And then within there, I'm going to create a new class file. I'm just going to call it demo.php. And then I've got some sample code we could throw in here. So once again, returning to the notes that accompany this video, let's grab the contents for this demo class. All right, and all this demo class does is it defines a function called test that's just going to return this string called testing. Now, the key thing to note about this class is we do set the namespace up top to be app, and this should match whatever namespace you have in your autoload settings. All right, now following that setup, if we go back to our index file, if we want to use this, we're going to add a use statement up top. So we're going to say use app backslash demo. All right, so we're referencing the namespace followed by the class we're targeting. And then we could use that class within our code. So I'll just throw in a print statement. I'm going to invoke that test function within demo. All right, and there's our output, that testing string, followed by a random quote after that. And with that, that's the basics of working with Composer in a plain PHP project without all the infrastructure you get with a framework uh, using both external classes as well as internal classes. If you have any questions about this setup or other questions about Composer, feel free to leave a comment below.